proceed. Mr. Aleppe, it is my understanding that you are making an appearance on behalf of Washington Interpreters for the limited purpose of calling Mr. Boyce. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Thank you. So with that, you may call your witness. Thank you. I call Juan Blois as uh, as a witness. Thank you. Please raise your right hand, sir. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you. Please state and spell your name for the record. My Thank name you. is Juan Blois, J-U-A-N-B-L-O-I-S-E. All right. Thank you. Do you have any documents in front of you or up on your computer screen? No. All right. Thank you. Mr. Aleppe, your witness. Thank you. Mr. Blois, are you a DSHS certified interpreter here in Washington State? Yes, I am. Since when have you been covering LNI appointments? Since the year 2009. Thank you. Did you use Did you used to have enough appointments to support yourself and your family before this implementation? Yes, I did. How often were you getting paid by LNI? By weekly. Were your payments delayed significantly on uh, on a frequent basis? No, they were not. Are you signed up with Interpreting Works to receive appointments from the scheduling system? No, I am not. Why not? I do have several issues with the implementation, mainly the fact that um, opportunities are limited for independent interpreters. We cannot bill directly unless it is for emergency walk-in or emergency situations. So that, that limits the amount of work that I could do directly. I do not like the fact that... Uh, I did register for the MPI registry and I had to start a process to change uh, my address because if you put your home address, it's going to be public for everyone there. So I did not like that. I do have privacy concerns when it comes to the uh, geographical location tracking uh, that Interpreting Works uses to offer appointments to interpreters. So I didn't want to sign up because of that. I uh, wasn't in agreement with the way that working conditions were changed by LNI while in the middle of an election. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schneider, I have a question. In regards to the exhibits that we plan on offering here, since only a certain, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a certain amount were stipulated, uh, do you want me to start from the first one and start from there, or do you want me just to pick the ones that have not been? If you want, uh, <coughs> the exhibits that the, there was not an agreement to admit are not in the record. So if you want those exhibits in the record, then you're going to have to offer them. Um, okay. Mr. Blois, um, I will ask you to verify the authenticity of the following exhibits. Mr. Schneider, could you please pull up exhibit 17 out of our exhibits? Thank you. On here. All right. Mr. Blois, can you identify identify this document? Uh, yes, I can. Before I would like to uh, present this document or this exhibit, it's titled National Provider Identif Identifier NPI Application Update Form, for the record. Mr. Blois, how did you obtain this document? This is a document that I obtained uh, directly from the NPI registry, so I could register as an NPI provider. This is a requirement uh, to be a provider to register with the scheduling system, when I was considering whether or not I wanted to register, I looked through the application through a series of links provided by the department. Thank you. Mr. Schneider, could you, could you please do me a favor and scroll down on this document to section uh, two, uh, item 18, right there. Thank you. Mr. Boyes, could you please read section two, item 18? Furnish your social security number for purposes of unique identification. If you furnish your social security number, this name must match the name and date of birth on file with the Social Security Administration. If you do not furnish your social security number, processing of your application may be delayed because of the difficulty of verifying your identity via other means. You may also have difficulty establishing your proper identity with insurers from which you receive payments. If you are not eligible for a social security number or SSN, see item number 19. If you do not furnish your social security number, you must furnish two proofs of identity with this application form. Acceptable forms include valid passport, birth certificate, a photocopy of your U.S. driver's license, state-issued identification, or information requested in item 19, Visas and employer identification cards are not acceptable. Thank you. Mr. Schneider, can you please scroll down just a little bit so we can see uh, item 19? 
That's good. Um, Mr. Blois, could you please read item 19? I would like to object. I would yeah. like to object. Uh, this document has not been admitted into evidence. The document would speak for itself if it was. There's also lack of relevancy in the information that's being read from the document to yeah, these I mean, proceedings. Well, Mr. Lepe, I don't think it's necessary. The document does speak for itself. It's not necessary to have the witness read particular pieces out of it. If you have questions beyond, that go beyond what's the what's in the text of the document, you know, feel free to ask those questions. If not, then you're welcome to offer it whenever it's appropriate. But it's not necessary. It burdens the record to just read text from something that's in the in the document into the record. Okay. So then we can proceed to the next exhibit then. Did you want to offer Washington Interpreters Exhibit 17? Yes, I would like to offer Exhibit 17 up to the official record. All right, any objection? Yes, the state objects for lack of relevance. All right. The Federation has the same position. I mean, it, there hasn't been any testimony to tie this document to the issues in this case. All right, Mr. Lepe, any response? Well, I object to those uh, exhibits not being admitted into this record because uh, these exhibits were uh, gathered you know, from public hearings and or Washington State Legislature or LNI uh, emails. Uh, public records obtained by public disclosure request, so I, I find them being relevant. Uh, okay, I understand that the document is, I don't have any doubt that it is what you say it is, but why is it relevant to the proceeding that we're here talking about? Well, it states clear information that we will be needing to uh, present later on. I'm sorry, can you ex give me a, a little bit more background? What do you, what do you mean? Well, it, these items here on this, uh, in this exhibit is information uh, that we would like to uh, present now that we will be using to uh, to present our case. Okay. All right. I'm going to overrule the objections. I'm going to let it in. You know, I think based on the witness's testimony, it appears that this uh, tangentially addresses the privacy concerns that were identified by a number of the witnesses that were brought about by the implementation of interpreting works. And I, I guess there could be an argument that those, when you're weighing whether to whether the software was something that the employer was required to hold off on implementing, you know, when weighing that decision, I guess, it could be relevant to sort of that calculus. So I'll let it in for that. Thank you. So Washington Interpreter 17 is received. Mr. Schneider, can you please uh, pull up Exhibit 18? There you go. This exhibit is, uh, is an email from Karen Jost at LNI to Eric Gonzalez and Mr. Uriel Iniguez is copied from LNI as well, and Susan Campbell. Mr. Blois, can you identify this document? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, what is it? This is a July 30th, 2018 email from um, LNI employee Karen Jost to an employee of Washington State Labor Council, Eric Gonzalez. Thank you. Therefore, we would like to uh, admit this uh, exhibit into the uh, official record. Any objection? Yes, the state objects as to relevance. Mr. Love. Same. All right, Mr. Lepe, any response? We want to establish this communication that, that's been ongoing from the very beginning. We want to uh, prove our case using all this, this uh, information. The communication between the program managers, information that we're going to need moving forward. And I'm sorry, who is Eric Gonzalez again? Mr. Lepe? Is, he's a interpreter, I believe. Okay, give me a second. Let me look through the document. No. Legislative Policy Director, Washington State Labor Council. Yeah, I guess I'll overrule the objection in a minute for the purposes of it describes, in, albeit somewhat briefly, the process that LNI was using to speak or the timeline that LNI was using to implement the transition to interpreting works. Thank you. I would also like to uh, offer this exhibit into the official record, please. Yeah, I'm, it's admitted. Mr. Uh, Snyder, then can we please pull up exhibit? Wait. I'm sorry, Mr. Snyder, can we have a five minute break? I really need to use the bathroom. Yeah, sure, let's go off the record. All right, let's go back on the record. Mr. Snyder, can you refresh my memory? It was uh, Exhibit 18 admitted to the uh, official record? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Snyder, could you please pull up Exhibit 19 of our exhibits? Mm -hmm. What? Could you zoom in just a little bit more? Thank you, that's fine. This exhibit is an email again from Susan Campbell from LNI to Karen Jost at LNI. And, and they copied uh, Ray Henley at LNI. Now, I would like uh, Mr. Blois to read this email, and therefore, so we can establish the relevancy. So I wanna, would like to proceed with asking some questions, if that's okay. I would object in that the relevancy needs to be established before we start reading something into the record. Yeah, I would 
agree. So, Mr. Lepe, can you focus on asking Mr. Bliss questions about the document? We don't need to read things into the record. If it's in the record, if it's not, then you don't, I mean, there's no point in reading something from the cockpit into the record. I'm not hearing you very well. So, if we could refrain from asking witnesses to read something into the, read a document into the record. If you have questions for the witness about the document, that's fine, but I'd prefer they not read it in, just read from something in the record. Yes, I have specific questions regarding this document from the witness. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bliss, can you identify these documents? Yes, I can. What are they? These are public disclosure request documents that I received directly from LNI, and this particular exhibit is a conversation or email correspondence between Susan Campbell and LNI staff. Okay, how did you obtain these documents? Via public disclosure request. They are relevant so we could establish their process and their processes to deal with implementation of SSP 6245. Mr. Schneider, could you please do me a favor and scroll down? How far? Page three. Bear with me, I'm talking all these pages. Okay, that's okay, right there. Thank you. Mr. Bliss, could you please read section under duty implementation of SSB 6245? I would renew my objection. We still haven't got to relevancy of a PDF document that describes a position. Okay, I'm going to give, I'm going to overrule the objection for now and give Mr. Lepe some leeway here. Mr. Bliss, you can answer the question. Okay, so I'm going to be reading duty implementation of SSB 6245. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I want to take that back. I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question, Mr. Lepe. Please refrain from asking the witness to read documents into the record. It's not necessary. If we admit the document, then the text is in the record. If it's not admitted because it's rejected, then it shouldn't have been, then the text from the document should not be in the record. You can ask him questions about it, but it's, please don't ask him to read the document. Understood. Mr. Bliss, can you explain to me this section on duty implementation of SSB 6245? So I can't read it, but what I could say, even though this was a job posting, it talks about the implementation of SSB 6245. It talks about the options that this bill gave LNI that they had to choose from in order to implement their scheduling system. They had three options. This is an argument that we have been making from the beginning, and this is the relevancy of this document to show these options. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, thanks. I would like to offer this exhibit into the official record, please. Any objection? Yes. That information is provided in numerous other documents, and this is not even an accepted position description form for a person that was actually, or a position that was actually filled. So the relevancy is tenuous at best as to its acceptance as evidence in this proceeding. Mr. Yellow? As I understand it, the document's being offered to show that in 2018, LNI had options. If that's the purpose, I don't have any objection. All right. So I'm going to overrule the objection, and I'll admit it, although I would agree that it's the accepted position is not filled at its marginal relevance, but there's enough for me to admit it. So with that, Washington Interpreters 19 is received. Thank you. 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 Th